Welcome to S1. Now we're going to look at, in this video, the normal distribution, which is uh, chapter 7 or unit 7 within your S1 uh, textbooks. Now, let's try and do a little bit about everything. So we'll start off by talking about what the normal curve is. So it's just something roughly like this. It's not a very good drawing. Uh, this one's not very symmetrical. It should be quite symmetrical. I mean, it should be perfectly symmetrical, but, you know, we do deal with ones that aren't, for example. And this shape is often called a bell curve. Now, this area here will always total 1. Okay, the area under the curve will total 1, and it's all going to be based on our probabilities. And then what we do, or what we talk about, is that this central point here will be the mean. And then we look at standard deviation. So think about, you know, kind of one standard deviation from the mean. And that is then going to take up kind of 68%. So this would be like the mean plus one standard deviation and the mean minus one standard deviation. And this is 68%. Then when you move to kind of two standard deviations from the mean, so now we like at the mean plus two standard deviations or the mean minus two standard deviations. This part now is up to 95%. So here is our 95%. This section, 68%. And then finally, right at the kind of ends, we have three standard deviations from the mean. And this then is going to be at our 99.7%. Um, Okay, um, the percentages are approximate and essentially anything that is more than five standard deviations from the mean is effectively zero as it's so close to zero that it is effectively zero. So this is just something to be aware of. There are not a lot of questions about this, but there have been the odd question that has mentioned about being a standard deviation from the mean or two standard deviations from the mean so you should know that and of course you know if we're looking at just one side we'd be looking at half of that value you know so there's 68 percent it does mean it's 34 percent here and 34 percent this side of the mean okay and the bell curve or the the normal distribution this is the kind of thing that represents a lot of things we see in real life for example heights you know we have a lot of people at that average height you know if you think of the average height of an adult male um actually i'm not entirely sure what that is like 510 six foot i don't know about 178 180 centimeters maybe um you know, you get a lot of people around that average, a lot of people just below it or just above it. But then as we start going out, you know, the people that are quite a bit above it, you know, that's then going into much smaller parts of your population. So, you know, you're thinking about in real life, you know, you see very few people who are really tall and very few people who are really short. And that's what kind of creates this normal distribution. Now, normal distribution is going to look roughly... Oh, I missed it at the end. So it's going to have something that looks like this. Okay. So the x is my random variable. Uh, it doesn't have to be x. It could be y. It could be anything. Uh, this little symbol just means distributed. N for normal... Then we've got mu for mean and our symbol for standard deviation. Remember that uh, standard deviation and 
sorry, this is for variance, um, and standard deviation is the square root of that. So I'll just pop those in for you, like so. And as this is a video kind of just going to cover every base, I also want to talk about our standard normal distribution. So this is Z, I often mention kind of Z values when I'm talking, and this is just a standard form. So what we want to do is we always want to change whatever normal distribution we have into the standard normal distribution, and then that allows us to find the values that we need. Now, in this case, the mean is always going to be zero, as you can see here and the variance will be one okay so this is for the normal or the standard normal distribution okay now let's have a little look at some questions how we go about setting everything up and i'm going to try and do it in a way that hopefully will make sense um you will be able to skip some of these steps, but I'm going to try and set it out in a way that is easy to follow and that you can always apply it then to any question. But before I do this, one additional piece of information that we need, and that is our Z and how it relates to our random variable. So Z is X value minus the mean over the standard deviation. So let's look at this first one. So I want to find when x is less than or equal to 26. Now, first thing to take note of is this sign. Less than or equal to, or like we can see here in b, we just go greater than. These are interchangeable in this one. It doesn't matter whether you're using with an equals or not. Okay, the normal distribution is continuous data both are perfectly acceptable in any question and you treat them exactly the same. Okay, so without further ado, let's make a start. Now, what I would say is when you're doing your normal distribution questions, I always recommend starting with a sketch. And on that sketch, you wanna put the mean in that central point. Now, you can do these without sketching, of course, but I think, you know, especially in the beginning, just keep sketching them. It makes your life so much easier. You'll get the understanding of what's going on much, much quicker, and you'll be able to visualize them later on. Okay, so important in the beginning is to practice it and always do your sketches. So just keep setting it out very much like I am here. Now, we want less than or equal to 26. So 26 is just going to be somewhere to the right of 20. It doesn't matter where. I want less than. So I am looking at this area here. Now, remember, this area, total area under this graph, under this line, is going to equal 1. Halfway, because it's symmetrical, would mean that this is a half. All of this left of the 20. So we'd expect a number between a half and one. Okay. Now, what I've got to do here is I've got to turn this into the normal, the standard normal. Okay. And that means I'm going to turn it into a graph where that gradient in the center is zero. And this one, you know, is in terms of Z. And to do that, I need to use the formula Z equals X minus the mean over the standard deviation. So this is 26 minus 20 over my standard deviation, which is four. So that gives me six over four or three over two or 1.5. Okay, 1.5 is this side of zero, it's a positive number and exactly the same as the other graph and it should look exactly the same in terms of where it's positioned and which side is shaded because all I've done is turn this one into the standard version of it okay now the standard version is where we get all our values for the area under the curve so let's go ahead now and take the next steps 
and these next steps are easy. So we started off with P is less than or equal to 26. That's now become the probability that Z is less than or equal to 1.5. You see, as I move from the original graph into the normal graph, my original into my normal one. Now, this is where I can go about into the set of tables in my book. So if you go towards the back of your book, this is also in the formula sheet, uh, formula booklet, but towards the back of your book, and you'll find it kind of in between the last exercise or last set of questions and the answers. And looking at it, you will see that there are just positive values. So if you look down the Z column, you will find a value of 1.5 and you'll see that it equals 0 0.9332. So here is the Z columns you're looking down, starting at 0 0.5, uh, sorry, starting at zero uh, and going all the way up to four there. But you can see here Z is 1.5 is here. That is then the area. So 0 0.9 so this equals 0 0.9332 and it is a value between 0 0.5 and 1 which is what we expected okay nice and easy let's look at the second one now part b so part b here is now a greater than so we've got p x is greater than 30 and as i said before it doesn't matter that there's no equals with it it's still the same thing so this is what my graph looks like 20 is my mean 30 is to the right of this and i'm looking at this area here okay now changing that in terms of z so if i think of my z, so this is sorry, px is greater than 30. z is x minus the mean over the standard deviation. So that is 30 minus 20 over 4, which is 10 over 4, or 5 over 2, 2.5 there. So now in terms of z, we've got 2.5. And that's the area we want to find. So we have probability that Z is greater than 2.5. Okay, now this is the important step. So within my set of tables at the back on page 183, what they actually do is they only give me the values that are positive. So from zero up to four. And they give me the area from that point and to the left of it. So if I look 2.5 up in my tables, what I'll actually get is this area to the left of 2.5, which is obviously what I don't want. I actually want 1 minus it because this total area is 1. So I actually want 1 minus the area to the left of 2.5. So that's one minus, and then I wanna to go to my tables. I've just cut that bit out of the table for you to see there. So we've got 2.5 and this is 9938. So we've got one minus 0 0.9938. And that should be 0 0.006. Two. Okay, hopefully it's been quite straightforward so far. Let's have a look at the next one. So part C, very similar to part B, we're looking at X is greater than or equal to 17. So again, I'm going to do my original graph. And you'll see, you know, I don't really care. It's just a, <laughs> getting roughly the shape. You know, that's what it's all about. So 17 will be to the left of 20. We want greater than 17, so we want this area here. 
And if I substitute that in to find my x, so remember this is, so to find my z, x minus the mean over the standard deviation. Now in this case, x is 17 minus 20 over 4. Now we can see we've got our first negative number for z, minus 3 quarters. So looking at what's happening, sorry, that's a terrible drawing, that's okay. So minus 3 quarters, so I'm just going to put that as decimal. And of course, the same shaded area. So we've got probability that x is greater than 17 is equal to the probability that z is greater than or equal to minus 0 0.75. And if you go to the tables, you'll notice there's a little bit of a problem. And the problem is there's no negative values. The smallest value is 0. There's nothing negative okay and that kind of brings me on to the next bit and what i have to do is well this type of graph is symmetrical so i can actually draw a mirror image of it so now i'm drawing a mirror image of it so i've got zero here this would be a positive 0.75 and then the area will be to the left of that. Okay, so you can see this area to the right is bigger than a half. Now we've got the area to the left is bigger than a half. So this is now a mirror image. So now we can say that this is, well, this is actually equal to Z being less than or equal to 0 0.75 happens to be the same thing. And now I can take that 0 0.75 and I look at my tables and yeah, 0 0.75 is in my tables. So looking across, reading across from that 0 0.75 and I get 0 0.7734. And that there is the area. So just run through that again, you know, I've got my original, change it to my standard, now this time the standard is negative, so I have to do a mirror image. I take this and I just flip it. Flip it around the y-axis so I get my mirror image. And then this value is positive and I can deal with it from there. Okay, it's just worth noting or as a reminder that your values have to be in this positive section for you to be able to use the tables. Question D, we've got it between two values now. So I just have to think about it again. Start with the sketch. Much, much easier with the sketch. So here we've got 22 and 25, and we want this area in between. And when I look at it, this then becomes quite easy because remember, any value in here I'll always look up that value and gives me the area to the left of it. So everything to the left of 25 minus everything to the left of 22 will leave me this overlapped area here because I'll be removing everything lower than 22. So let's first write it down where I'm doing my work now. And then let's look at our values of Z. Okay, so we've got Z is, and don't forget now it's X minus the mean over four. So we've got one, which is five over four. And then we also have 22 minus the mean over four. So that's two over four or one half and that is my area that I'm looking at so this is now the probability that we lie between 0 0.5 and 1.25 and as I said this is the same as looking at this area massive area here take away this area 
So this could be written as the probability that x is less than or equal to 1.25 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to 0 0.5. And all I need to do is look at both of these values and then do the simple calculation afterwards. So 1.25 is 0 0.8944 and then 0 0.5 is 0 0.6915 and that gives me 0 0.2029 which is then the area between them and just coincidentally you know all of these decimals don't forget if this question arose you can just turn that into a percentage. You know, this will be 20.29 or 20.3%. 20 or to the nearest percentage, it would be 20%. Final question here. So this time we've got 14 and 21. So you should be used to this now. Graph. Just roughly, it doesn't matter if you get the values even, as long as they make sense as in the, the right side of the central value. That's what's important. Now, for this one, I actually have a couple of options. So I can approach it very much like I did the previous question. Or I can think of this kind of a little bit more logically. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to first work out the Z values. So let's do that out of the way. So we've got 21 minus 20 over 4, which is 1 quarter, or 0 0.25. And then the other value is 14 minus 20 over 4. So that gives me negative 6 over 4, or negative 1.5. So, as I was saying, there's a couple of ways of approaching it. I'm going to show you what I think is the best way. And, you know, you can use the way I did in part D if you prefer. So, we've got our 21. Okay, so I'll do this first in a full value and then we'll split it up. Okay. Now, actually, let's... Yeah, let's draw out in the full first. And then we have 14 here. Now, does this make sense that if I add this one and this one, I get this total area here? You know, the area between 14 and 20, and that area between 20 and 21. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to swap these numbers for their z value so 0 and 0 0.25 and here we have negative 1.5 and 0 now final step with this bottom one again you know we can't look up negative numbers so let's mirror image it We get 1.5 and 0, and it's this area here. Now, I've done it like this on purpose because this part to the left is just a half. Because it's symmetrical and that's half of the area. So what that means is that if I look up this 0 0.25, I'll get a number, take away half, and I get this small area here because it'll be this answer, which is all of it, minus half. So if I do it up here, you know, if I'm looking at um, between the 0 0.25 and the 0, now 0 0.25 gives me 0 0.5987, and I'm going to take away my half, and that means that this little area in here is 0 0.0987. And looking at my second one, I'm going to look at 1.5. 1 1.5 1 is the value 0 0.9332. I think we've already done that once. And again, I'm going to take away 
0 0.5, that gives me 0 0.4332. And that is this area. So what I can go ahead and kind of say now is that, yeah, when we're looking at 14 to 21, this is going to be the same as these two areas. So I'm looking at essentially between, uh, what was it, minus 0 0.5. And 0 0.25. Obviously, this should just be a less than, but it doesn't make any difference for what I write all my calculations here. But this is now going to be my area of 0 0.0987 plus 0 0.4332. And that gives me a final total of 0 0.5319 for that area. Now I've decided to split this uh, video up into three main parts. Uh, this is the big part, okay, the bit that, you know, once you get this, everything else falls into place. Um, the second part, what we'll do is we'll look at finding the mean or the standard deviation if we don't know those, um, which is essentially simultaneous equations, but I'll do a separate video on that. And then the final part I'll do is there's an additional table at the back, just the other one more page over with a few other values. And what I'll do is I'll go through that table and where you would use it in a separate video. So we'll break those up into three main parts. And in fact, if I've got time, then I'll also do a fourth video for those of you who have the Casio 991, FX 991, class whiz edition as you can also work these um, areas out within your calculator so i'll go through how you use your calculator for that as well in a fourth part but the three parts is what you really need to be able to do for your exam the fourth is more of a a bonus if you have the the recommended calculator Now I'm going to start popping the answers up on my calculator and because I'm doing it on the calculator I'm not using the actual tables these might be slightly different values so for example that first one you know it's going to be a slightly different value because when you look this up you'll be looking up 0 0.67 as your value of z but in the calculator I can use the two thirds it gives me a slightly more accurate answer. So, you know, essentially you will be looking for something with the same, you know, if I rounded them both the three significant figures, they should be about the same. Okay, so don't worry if your answers are very slightly different to mine. Um, it's just because I'm, I'm trying to do this a little bit quicker and using my calculator. Now, I hope that was okay, me just putting the answers up for these for you to check quickly. Um, if not, let me know and maybe I'll just do a re-edit of this video and go through a few of these if it's uh, kind of what you guys need. One thing to note, like on the question like this, you might notice when you do it that both of these are equal distance from that 154. So just as a point there with that one, you know, they are, oh, sorry, exactly the same distance away. So you've got 186 and 140, and then 154 in the middle, which is a 1.17 and a minus 1.17.
So what you can do here is you can look up this value and then minus it 0 0.5 from it and that will give you this area here. And once you've done that, you just times it by two. Okay, nice and easy. And as I said, your answers might be slightly different apart from this one, but slightly different to mine as I've used the calculator rather than the tables.